Today during one of my live chats, I received a question that really struck home with me and I had to share it with you. As we're going through this video today, I want you to know that having a broken heart, feeling like you don't have the strength to go on, is completely normal after a relationship with a narcissist. There are certain things that you can do to get through it. So I'm going to share with you exactly what you can do to get through those initial days and weeks and even months of feeling desperate, feeling alone, feeling like your heart is shattered and you're just in a pile of the former self on the floor. So let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we'll just get going. Going through a relationship with a narcissist is really difficult. The end of that relationship sometimes feels even more difficult. So how are you supposed to get through those initial days and even the days that follow where you're asking yourself, how am I going to survive this? Am I ever going to get through this? It's not just your standard broken heart when you're talking about a narcissist either. It's so much bigger than that. And yeah, it's really hard to deal with. But you know what? Getting through this part is really essential for you, for your life, and everything that it involves as you move forward. Yeah, a broken heart is going to take time to mend even more so if you're in the middle of changing literally everything about your life, which very often you are when you're going through ending a relationship with a narcissist, whether it's your spouse or your friend or your parent. There's always some brokenness that comes along with it. It's an emotional pain that is so bottomless that it literally can feel like a physical blow to yourself. It is physically painful. It is emotionally painful. And when you're in this place, all you really feel like you want is just for this deep, horrible pain to just go away. As much as I'd like to tell you that there's some magical cure for it, there really isn't. There's no band-aid that can just literally be ripped off for a broken heart. And it does sound a little cliche, but time always does help heal all wounds. It is going to be the most effective way to get through it. However, there are things you can do along the way to speed it up a little bit if you want to. Over time, if you did nothing, the pain would eventually stop. But between now and then, the tips I'm going to offer you today will help you to make the pain a little less painful. It might make a little difference in how you're feeling and help you to stop feeling so much pain and start feeling a little bit more peace. First, I'm going to share with you my initial answer, the, the answer I gave during my live stream this morning, so that you can see what I said kind of off the top of my head and without rehearsing and thinking about it too hard. So take a look. David Sweeney is here. Hello, David. Says, hi, Angie. How did you find the strength to carry on knowing how hard the road ahead would be? That's a great question. I didn't have a choice. In my case, I had a child. And I'm going to tell you something, you guys. I was, I'm the one who left, <laughs> mind you. And yet I was completely devastated by the end of my relationship with my ex-husband. I found the strength to carry on because, partially because of my child. But I was devastated. I was, I couldn't eat for three weeks and that's really unlike me, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I felt like a failure. I felt like a loser. I felt like, you know, I'd wasted my life with this person and et cetera, et cetera. And I had always had this idea in my head that I never wanted to get divorced and I just had to, unless I wanted to be miserable for the rest of my life. So it was difficult for me, but what I did was I just sort of faked it till I made it. Uh, I felt like I didn't want to ruin my kid's life. I felt like I didn't want to ruin everybody else's life. So I, I cried for three weeks. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't talk. I couldn't eat. And then I was like, okay, this is it. I got to get over it. I got to move on. I have to live now. And, you know, three weeks may or may not have been enough time. I could barely do anything else. So I carried on because I had to carry on. I carried, I, I carried on because it was what I needed to do. And I'm not saying that, you know, if you don't have a child, you don't have a reason to carry on. But for me, that was the thing that poked me <laughs> to make me get over it quick, quicker. And I wasn't over it. And I still felt a lot of pain and sadness about it. But I had to go about the business of life. I had to. I had no choice. And neither do any of us. We have to go about the business of life. And so if, if we choose to, you know, stew in it forever and, and stop existing and, and just kind of or stop living and start existing only, then we need to put an end date on that. And that's something that I, I did without even knowing what I was doing. But it's something I've worked with several of my clients on, and it really does work. If you give yourself a certain amount of time to go through the morning and to be sad and scream and throw and break things and be angry and all those things, when you get to the place where it's time, okay, well, now it's Monday tomorrow. So now uh, tomorrow I'm not going to be in mourning anymore. I'm not going to be grieving anymore. I have to start living tomorrow. You do, even if you have to fake it a little bit at first. You find the strength by digging deep, 
and just knowing, okay, I have two choices. I can just crumble and stay down or, you know, I get knocked down, I get back up again, you know, and that's what you do. <laughs> Find yourself a power playlist, make yourself a power playlist. I did that too. Uh, music is huge. Uh, you know, some music that empowers you, that makes you feel strong and, and, and worthy and sexy and amazing all those things you know find those things uh for me sometimes i'm not gonna lie to you it involves dirty rap uh <laughs> now that you've heard that i'm gonna share with you four tips to help you take your pain and handle it in a way that is the most effective way you can if you take the time to listen to this video and really try some of these tips and really allow yourself the opportunity to breathe and move forward i really think you're going to find yourself feeling happier and more peaceful more quickly this is stuff that works, stuff I've worked with my clients through, and even more. Take a look. Number one, cry. You might feel awful for the first few weeks, depending on how emotional of a person you are, and you might feel like crying for days, and that's okay. Go ahead and do it. A significant change really has occurred in your life, and it's very painful. There's no way to expect that you will just feel a little sadness and be able to shut it off with a switch. It just isn't that simple. So allow yourself to grieve for your loss, but not for too long. Staying in the past for too long can only hurt you. Number two, talk to someone close or someone who's been there at least. Use the shoulder of someone who cares about you or who really understands, like a coach, a therapist, or a support group member, like in the Spanily, to get out your feelings. This is a way to purify your soul by letting someone share your pain. Let them listen, let them comfort you and offer advice. You don't necessarily have to take that advice, but sharing this comfort can make you feel better. Make sure you only allow yourself to grieve and lean on someone for a little while because you do need time to move forward. Number three, distract yourself. Bring friends you care about back into your life. Maybe having that relationship was keeping you from spending time with your parents or your siblings. Maybe you hadn't talked to your best friend in weeks. Surround yourself with the support network. Getting things that need to be done around the house is also a great way to get lost in a project. Go to the gym, organize your closet, get out and take a walk. Distracting yourself is a great stepping stone to moving on with your life. Number four, look toward the future. Forget the past. Once you've allowed yourself the indulgence of grieving for a part of your life that is now in the past, hey, look forward. There is a definite need to be able to start a new chapter in the book of your life. Now that you've come past the sadness and the anger, it's time for hope and renewal that will help you to move on. So take time out for yourself. Get to know yourself as a single individual instead of as part of a couple. Replenish your soul by becoming you again. One more quick tip for you, something that I do with my clients, as I mentioned in that clip earlier, very often we do this thing where we kind of set an end date on our morning. It's not to say that you actually stop feeling all the pain at that moment, but it's more about giving yourself a certain amount of time to go through the hardest parts of the grieving. To go through the parts of the grieving where you feel just devastated and miserable, like you can't get anywhere. And if you take that time, I, I recommend anywhere from a weekend to three weeks, four weeks at the most. Four weeks would be for someone who has been in a relationship for 25, 35 years. A weekend might be for someone who's been in a relationship for a few months. Anywhere in between. Whatever works best for you and with your schedule and your life because you really can't stop living forever. Take some time, pick a day, end the pain, end the active mourning on that date. This doesn't mean that you can't feel sad about it in a year when something strikes your memory and triggers you back into sadness. But it does mean that this is going to be the time that you're going to actively mourn this person and this relationship and the person that you thought you were getting into or getting with when all of this started and and also the person that you used to be because now you're not going to be that person anymore no matter how hard you try but you can become a new better version of yourself and that my friend can be a very beautiful thing check out my videos in the description below about becoming who you want to be and don't forget to check out the videos in the cards above as well because they're going to help you move forward as well if you take the time to follow these steps as difficult and painful as they can be you will begin to find yourself again. Your heart will begin to heal. Not only can you become whole again, a whole person individually by yourself, but you can also become exactly the person you want to be, the person you've always wanted to be, the person you deserve to be. You can be happy. It doesn't last forever, I promise you. 
stay strong, stay focused. Choose yourself over pain. Choose yourself, your happiness over the happiness of the narcissist. Don't forget you can join SPAN for free at queenbeing.com span. It is an amazingly supportive group and I'm here Monday through Friday in the morning. Longer sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays because those are my less busy days where I come in and I sit down and I talk with you guys, listen to you, share your feelings. I share my thoughts on your feelings and so on and so forth. It is a free support group available for you every weekday morning. Span is free. My morning chats are free. Join us. Get in here and get healed, my friend. This is your chance to start fresh. Once the pain starts to ease off a little bit and relieve a little bit, you're going to see that and you're going to realize this turns out to be an amazing opportunity for you to become the person you've always wanted it to be. The beautiful thing. This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, what do you think about all this? Do you understand where I'm coming from here? Do you agree with me that you can heal and change? Have you personally healed? And if you have, what did you do to heal? Share your thoughts, your experiences, and your feelings below. Let me know what you've done if you have healed because I believe that you'll help another survivor who maybe is on the same path as you. If you haven't healed, let me know what you're struggling with and I'll make more videos to help you get through those moments. As always, thanks so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.